welcome. Let's have a discussion continues on statistics. And in this episode, we are moving straight on to a group frequency distribution. In our previous lesson, we did how to construct the frequency distribution word table. So how do we group data when the data is having a wide range of numbers? We need to group them to become simpler so that each group or each class will be assigned with some values or assigned with some frequencies. So we do that by making use of what we call class interval. So in this, we are also going to make use of ways like class limit. So the class limit, then in this, if I pick, for example, the class interval, which we used in the previous example, the interval from 0 to 9, from 10 to 19, and 20 to 29. This is an example of class interval, which shows the width or the breadth of data. Or better still, we can say it shows the difference between the upper class limit and the lower class limit. And the class limit is being mentioned. So the number, the first, the end point, the beginning point is what you call the lower class limit. The limit of the class. So this is the lower class limit. Then the end at the right become the upper class limit. So this applies to 10. So in this case, 10 is also the lower class limit, 19, upper class limit, lower and upper. So in this case, this range, the numbers from 0 to 9 is determining the class interval, the interval, the grouping, the difference between the upper class boundary and the lower class boundary. So that make use of these two terms. Then we are also going to make use of what they call class boundary. So the class boundary, we can say that it is a point where one class separates it, itself from the other. So in a group frequency distribution, the class boundary will just be, or usually, uh, what they call halfway through the upper class limit of one data or one class and the lower class limit of the next one. Halfway through, meaning the upper class boundary and this, the sum of that of this and this upper class uh, limit of one class and the lower class limit of the next one if i add the two halfway meaning divided by two i should be able to get my class boundary now we can also create a class boundary by finding the difference between the upper class boundary of one data and the lower class boundary of the next one we find half of that. So the difference between this is just one. From here to here, 20 minus this is one. 10 minus 9 is one. So the difference is one. You divide it by two, and that still gives you what? Half. So for me to get the class boundary, I am going to subtract this half that I'll be writing in decimal. Half from all the lower limits. Then I'll add the half to all the upper limits. The half that I have as the difference between the upper limit and the lower limit of the next uh, class, I'll find half of that, subtract it from all the lower limits and add it to all the upper limits. So in this case, for this, the class boundary is going to be, let me state it under it, If I subtract half from zero, it will be zero minus half. That will have been negative 0 0.5. Then from that to addition of half to nine, that become 
9.5. You remember I said subtract for all of them. So this become 10 minus half. That would be 9.5. Adding half to 19. It will be 19.5. Subtract half from 20. It will become 19.5. Add it to 29. It will be 29.5. So if you check carefully, you'll be seeing that the from the class boundary, the upper class boundary, this become upper class boundary. This is the upper class limit. Upper class boundary. Upper class limit. The difference between the upper class boundary of one class and the, the next lower class limit of the next class are the same. If you check it, we become a continuous range. From here, we come here. The next one will also be 29.5, 39.5, 49.5 in that order. That will give you a relation different from this. This is having a difference of one. One. This one has no difference at all. It becomes the same data. All right. So with this being drawn as the class boundary, we can use the class boundary in order to find what we call class size. In some place of class width. So what is the class size? The class size is the difference between the upper class boundary and the lower class boundary. The difference. The same class. Upper class boundary, lower class boundary. The difference between them. So 9.5 minus your negative 0.5. If you add half to half, it becomes 1. 1 plus 9. That will be 10. Meaning, my class boundary here, my class size is going to be 10. Here, will also be 19.5 minus 9.5. You will still get 10. So, your class size, is the size of the class, is the same in all data that you have. So, if you are having this 10, 10, 10. The class size is not based on interval. If you subtract 0 from 9, you get 9. 19 from 10, you get uh, 9. 29 minus 20, you will still get 9. But here, you will be getting 10. So that is what we use to determine the class size. I believe you are getting the concept. Good. So this class boundary is used for class size. This is what we use to generate the class boundary. So with this, we can also have what we call class midpoint. Or sometimes we call what? The the class mark. How do we get a class mark? We know that we cannot be able to uh, call the whole of this as, let's say 0 to 9 we need to mention one data that will represent 0 to 9 we need one data that will represent 10 to 19 that is where the class midpoint come in the midpoint between this will give a description to this class interval so if I pick a number in the middle here I will use that number to represent the class interval that is the class midpoint or the class size how do we do that? We do class midpoint. Let me have it here. The midpoint is adding the class upper limit and lower limit divided by 2. Midpoint in the middle. So it will be 9 plus 0 over 2. 10 plus 19 over 2. 20 plus 29 over 2. So this will give you 4.5. Don't forget, it will be part of the table. So this table come, this come, the next one come. If all will be used in a question, it must be in a table form. Then this is going to be 29 divided by this will be 14.8. This will also be 20 plus this, 49. So 40 
20. So you have 24.5. Now, one trick we also have to know is that the moment I know my class size, the class size, which I found to be 10, 10, 10. If I am creating the class midpoint, the moment I know one of the data, or the first one, add the 10, which is the class size to it, you will generate all of them. I'm taking it again. Knowing the class size, if you add the class size to the first data of your class midpoint, you will get the remaining one. 4.5 plus 10 will give me 14.5. 14.5 plus 10, 24.5. 24.5 plus 10, 34.5 in that relation. I believe the concept of class interval, class limit, class boundary, class size, and class mark has been explained because this could be used in solving questions either on the graphical representation or on the central tendency of a frequency table. Thank you for watching. Like, share, and comment. Come back to this space. Let's continue the tutorial. Bye-bye.